Hello everyone. Welcome to Elasticity and the Total Revenue Test. This is uh, Elasticity Lesson Number 4. So, uh, you might ask yourself, well, how is it that total revenue and elasticity are related? Well, first, remember that elasticity is this ratio of the percentage change in Q over the percentage change in P, while total revenue is just P times Q. P times Q. So, if, here, let me move my image out of the way. So, if you remember uh, that on a demand curve, P and Q are moving in opposite directions. Remember, when the price goes up, quantity demanded falls, and when the price goes down, quantity demanded increases. So, P and Q, these things right here, are moving in opposite directions. So, what's happening to total revenue depends on which one of these things is moving the most. Because when P goes up, Q goes down. On the other hand, when P goes down, Q goes up. So, here's uh, just that rule. As you move along a demand curve, one variable is increasing total revenue while the other is decreasing it. And you're really just trying to figure out, well, which one is doing the most work. So here is the formal total revenue test. There are three rules. The first one, when price goes down and total revenue goes up, then you must have been in the elastic part of the demand curve. And the second one is just the opposite of that. When the price goes down and total revenue goes down, then you must have been in the inelastic part of the demand curve. And finally, the special case, dead square in the middle, when the price goes down and total revenue stays exactly the same, you must have been in the unitary elastic part of the demand curve. So that's the rule, but I think it might help you to sort of understand, rather than just memorize those things, it might help you to understand what's really going on to look at it in Excel. So what I've done here is I've just kind of laid out the price and quantity values for a simple demand curve that you see up there. Uh, quantity demanded is uh, 50 minus 2P. See that? All right, so let's figure out what total revenue is. Well, total revenue is just defined to be the selling price times the quantity, so it would be P times Q. So when the price is zero, total revenue is zero times 50 or zero. When the price is 50 cents, sales would be 49, so total revenue would be 0.5 times 49 and so forth. So you can see all these total revenues. Now if you've never done this before, you might be surprised to discover here, let me clean it up a little bit. That's kind of jumping all over. Now that probably looks a little better. If you've never done this before, you might be surprised to discover that total revenue starts out really small. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But it doesn't get bigger forever. It Finally, it sort of maxes out, dead square in the middle, right in here. And then it gets smaller and smaller and it goes back to zero again. So I hope you can see that total revenue starts at zero and ends at zero and in the middle it kind of maxes out. In a minute I'll draw that for you. Now let's go ahead and calculate point elasticity also. So remember the formula for elasticity is 1 over the slope times P over Q. So it would be in this case the demand curve the slope is 0.5. Now I can just see that because I've done them so many times I can just see it by looking at the equation. But if you don't see where I got the slope you should pick two points on the demand curve and look here you got like 50 of them pick any two and go ahead and calculate the slope but you should find that the slope is minus 0.5 so point elasticity would be uh, let's see we'll do it this way it would be 1 divided by the slope which was minus 0.5 then times the p-value which is that divided by the Q value which is that alright so point elasticity here is zero and that should be pretty obvious because the price is zero and it's in the numerator of the formula but as we copy it all the way down here we get all these different elasticities and again let me just kinda clean that up a little bit there so that should look a little better now notice First of all, they're all negative, so ignoring the sign, you can see that uh, when the price is really, really low, elasticity is uh, zero, and when the price is really, really high, elasticity is some big number. So this is the elastic part down here, 
because remember the rule ignoring the sign when the value of elasticity is greater than one it's elastic so all of this stuff all of this stuff is elastic right that part's elastic and this part over here is inelastic inelastic can you see that and dead square in the middle that's the unitary elastic spot so let's apply the total revenue test and you can see the total revenue test says if when the price goes down and total revenue goes up well let's see so going down would be this way right seven six fifty six so if when the price goes down total revenue goes over here total revenue is going down so that's rule number two if when the price goes down and total revenue goes down you must be in the inelastic part and yes we are and then over here if when the price goes down right going down total if when the price goes down and total revenue goes up and it is look at this see that if when the price goes down and total revenue goes up you must be in the elastic part and we are and then right in here if when the price goes down and total revenue stays the same right in here then you must have been in the unitary elastic spot so there they are now let's go ahead and draw these graphs and I think it'll really uh, help you understand what's going on so let's try a simple uh, scatter plot and uh, first let's get the demand curve drawn make this thing a little bigger so we're going to uh, select the data and uh, we'll just call it the uh, demand curve and my uh, x values of course are the quantity so that's this stuff and my y values are the uh, prices that's this stuff and we'll OK that OK that so there's our demand curve right there's our demand curve you've seen it many times now let's put in a total revenue curve and we'll put it right down here uh, why didn't that work total revenue curve here we are we'll put it just underneath see if I can make this thing work whoa didn't mean to do that yeah that should work trying to make them exactly the same so they'll kinda line up so in this graph we're gonna plot out total revenue so select my data total revenue uh, sorry so then my x values again are the quantities that's this stuff and now my y values are the total revenue that's this stuff right here there you go now check out that total revenue curve can you see that when the demand curve was uh, way up here total revenue was rising so this part I can't draw it very well for you but this part right here is the elastic part because total revenue is going up dead square in the middle that's the inelastic part let's see if my drawing tools will work uh, let's see just put a little line in there see if this will work yeah I didn't think it would it won't let me so but anyway every place uh, on the top half of this demand curve total revenue is increasing that's the elastic part and on the bottom half of this demand curve total, total revenue is decreasing that's the inelastic part in dead square in the middle total revenue is staying the same and that's the unitary elastic place so I've, uh, hopefully I've showed you a lot of different ways to uh, understand the total revenue test there are just the rules that you can memorize but that seems really painful to me it seems like it's a lot easier to understand uh, sort of mathematically or conceptually what's 
uh, going on. So uh, there you go. See if I can get back to the PowerPoint. And for some reason the camera really zoomed in on me. Here we are. So that ends uh, total revenue. And uh, the next thing in elasticity is a multivariable demand curve and all the elasticities that would go with that. I know it sounds really complicated and in an introductory class probably don't talk about it very much but I'm going to show it to you anyway and then uh, you can decide whether it's important to remember for your particular class or not. Alright, hope you found this helpful. Good luck.